Hello everyone and happy World Oceans Day. Today is World Oceans Day and so today the Science Live that I'm going to do is about plastic pollution because it is something that I have spent a lot of time working on and something that I have come to learn is even more important than, than we're made to think it is. So today is Are We Breathing in Plastics for World Oceans Day but first we're going to ask what is this? Pumpkin Master saying, is it a big cucumber? It's a marrow. Yeah, it is a prize, it is a prize marrow. Now, the reason I wanted to start with like, with a crop, even though we're talking about plastic and breathing it in and we're talking about the oceans, is because I think that a lot of this story begins of how we treat our oceans with thinking about how we treat other things. And one of them is the soil. And the soil is something I've spoken about a little bit before. So farmers tend to use a ton of fertilizer in order to make their, their soil grow more crops. Remember that plants don't get their food from the soil, plants make their own food, mainly from sucking in carbon dioxide, and so they're basically building themselves using air and sunlight to turn the carbon dioxide into, into wood and, well, sugars and matter and stuff. But they need some minerals from the soil, and the main ones they need are nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. So humans, us guys, we were like, right, we're pretty clever, so we figured out that this is what the plants want, so let's just give it to them. Let's give them nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium and that has been the theory of farming for, for many decades now and so in order to grow loads of crops we just throw loads and loads of those chemicals onto the ground and lo and behold we get huge crops and this is great and it carries on being great for ages and then what happens? If you just add all these chemicals year after year then that you kill off loads of the living things in the soil. What we didn't realize is that in order to produce a large amount of crops over a long period of time, it's much more important to keep the soil alive and then the soil will look after the plants for us. This is something that we now kind of understand or are starting to understand. And yet most farmers in the world are still yet to catch up on this news. These things take a while to spread the word about, which is really painful because this is really damaging the world at the moment, the fact that people are treating soil really badly. But the reason I talk about this is because things are declining and getting worse, and yet we know the solution. We're not doing anything about it fast enough. Um, the point being that like often, humans get things very wrong even when we think we're doing things right and it'll take a long time to convince farmers that they need to massively reduce their use of chemical fertilizers and use different methods instead. This is Los Angeles. Um, Los Angeles is on a flat plain with the kind of mountains in the background. In Los Angeles, how much plastic do you guys reckon enters the ocean each day? in kilograms. Sean and Toast saying, God, I wish everyone would do the right thing. I hate that we even have to argue about climate change. I know, but unfortunately there are a lot of very greedy people in the world and there are a lot of very ignorant people in the world and that's why we have to work so hard to get the truth to people and help people to understand. Because something that I believe really strongly is that there aren't actually people, there aren't many people in the world who are like fundamentally evil. I, I just don't really believe that that exists. I think that for the, for the most part, people who do things that are bad do them because they go along with the stories that they tell themselves in their mind. And we, we need to get through to these people and change the stories that they tell themselves. We need to get these people to understand that actually this is far more important and there's no point in even trying to set up a business to, to make, make money if, if there's not gonna be a world for us to actually live on. Oh my God, everyone's like spot on with the numbers. You guys have all seen my film. Um, yes, there's 10,000 kilograms of plastic approximately that blow into the ocean just from Los Angeles alone uh, every single day. If you go and visit um, some of the like Pacific Islands and you investigate the, the albatrosses there, approximately what percentage of them do you guys reckon have plastic in their stomachs? These albatrosses might be as far away from civilization as you can get on Midway Atoll in the, in the North Pacific. So Angel's saying about 45%, Oliver's saying 90, 1 million sloths 75. It's thought that it's approximately 100% of these birds that have plastic in their, in their systems. And, and it looks so much like the kind of food that the parents would bring back to regurgitate into the mouths of the babies that, yeah, it's, it's, thought, it's thought that close to 100% of seabirds have plastic in their stomachs nowadays. Anyway, this is one of the things that we kind of worry about 
more easily because we can kind of feel it and we can imagine this feeling of having our stomachs full of plastic and having no way of, of getting rid of it. But it's actually not, it's not, not the biggest problem. The, the biggest problem is, is, is something else. Has anyone heard of the Great Pacific Garbage Patch? Um, and Jasmine is saying, aren't there multiple different garbage patches? Yes, so um, it's thought that there are different kind of regions like this around the world, and I'm about to explain why. So Japan Maple is saying twice the size of Texas, and Angel is saying pretty much an island made of garbage. OMH MPH is saying, no, but I don't want to hear about it, sorry. <laughs> right, so basically you have these things called gyres, and a gyre is, is the consequence of an ocean current. So lots of the currents in the world go around in circles in the oceans, and the Pacific Ocean has the biggest one, which circles like this. And because it circles, any waste that gets caught up in this region is kind of gradually sucked towards the middle. And by the way, the, the atoll that I was talking about, which has the albatrosses on it that we were just looking at, is around, around here somewhere, Midway Atoll. It's kind of midway across the Pacific Ocean. This, this is kind of the center. And so the story goes that there is this huge island essentially made of plastic that is twice the size of Texas, the size of Japan, and so on. Now, not too long ago, um, some people I know who work with the Plastic Oceans uh, Foundation went uh, sailing to this Great Pacific garbage patch, and they were collecting with like these sieve buckets out the back, kind of samples along the way to see how thick the rubbish got when they got there. Now, when they arrived, they found something really, really surprising. What do you think it was that they found? They arrived and they were expecting this big island made of plastic and what they found was almost nothing. Now, I say almost nothing. So, so obviously, you know, there have been these rumors going around the world of an island twice the size of Texas, which is huge, or the size of Japan. And it's not like that. It's not like that at all. Instead, it's really, really sparse in terms of the large pieces of plastic. Most of the big pieces of plastic have sunk to the bottom. Really important because that is one of the main reasons why we can't really do anything about this with a net. Like there have been now been multiple expeditions where they go to different places in the ocean, sink down a diver and find that the bottom is covered in plastic um, that is going nowhere because plastic does not degrade. It takes thousands of years to degrade potentially. The other thing is what is left on the surface is rather than being big chunks of plastic is instead tiny little particles like a gloop of plastic. And that is a very large region. I'm not sure of the comparisons, whether it's twice the size of Texas or anything, but but that is a huge region of space that is covered in pieces of plastic. The thing about tiny pieces of plastic is that they are essentially magnets for ocean pollutants. If you get a tiny piece of plastic in the ocean and you leave it in the ocean for literally like an hour, then the concentration of pollutants like dangerous chemicals, runoff fertilizers, things like DDT and so on, like ocean poisons, the, the concentration of those things on the surface is literally millions and millions of times higher than the rest of the ocean within just a few hours of those pieces of plastic being in the ocean. And so what you have is this huge cloud of not just tiny pieces of plastic that when eaten by sea creatures can't be digested, but they're covered in poisons. And those um, poisons, when they are eaten by sea creatures, which inevitably they are, then work their way up the food chain. We are feeding plastic into our, own, into our own food chain because we are part of the ocean food chain as well. Now, the tiny particles of plastic, where do they come from? Let's talk about the sources of microplastics because microplastics are the, are the kind of really small pieces of plastic. Where do they come from? Has anyone got any ideas? So Oliver's saying toothpaste. Um, and some shower gels. Yes, exactly. So a lot of toiletries contain these things called microbeads, which you might have seen advertised a while ago, but now they've all been banned by the EU. Unfortunately, the producers of microbeads, a lot of them in the EU, have now just started selling them to other markets. That makes up about a 30th of all the microplastics in the ocean. Someone said synthetic fibers, brilliant OMH, NPH, that is, that's the biggest one. So every time we wash our clothes, if you wear any clothes that contain any plastic, plastic at all when you wash them, if you're not using like a really, really modern washing machine, because they've literally only just invented this stuff, then you will be leaking plastic fibers into the water systems. Washing uh, plastic clothes makes up literally a third of all the microplastics um, that enter the ocean. And a quarter is, no one got this, a quarter is tires. 
Um, a huge amount of it comes from tires. When you create these tiny little microplastics in the ocean, the ocean will continually churn them up until it's making them smaller and smaller and smaller until eventually some waves clap together and a load of plastic rises in a spray into the air and it's small enough that it doesn't come down. And instead, it just stays in the air and it starts to fill the air of the planet. And nowadays, there is so much plastic in the air that all of us, everyone watching this right now, is breathing in plastic right now. In fact, if you're in London, London is one of the highest concentrations of plastic in the air of, of many major cities tested in the world. No scientist is standing up and saying, this is really bad for you to be breathing in plastic and therefore we must do, must do something about it. Why do you think no scientist is standing up and saying that yet? What do you guys reckon? Oliver's saying no papers yet, and Oliver's got it spot on. And so is Mears, not enough research. Not enough research has been done yet to, to show that plastic is dangerous when it's breathed in. And so it's kind of still in the position where it could, could well be like, like smoking, where it's, it could be a much, much bigger problem than we realize. It's just none of the research has been done yet. Just one last thing that I wanted to leave you with, instead of leaving you with that kind of quite, um, bleak uh, ending info is this. We could solve so much of the problem about plastic so quickly if we could just slightly change the laws. The thing is a lot of laws already exist around the world to protect the oceans from materials that are hazardous. Companies all over the world cannot just dump toxic waste uh, of, of certain kinds into, into the oceans. So all you need to do actually is get all these um, countries, all these, all these legal systems to reclassify plastic as hazardous in the ocean. And then most of the work is already done for you because all the systems are already in place. It would be as illegal to drop uh, plastic in the ocean as it would be to drop nuclear waste. All we need to do is change the legal system and then we can actually really start to turn things around. The solution is not, maybe not as far away as we think it is once we finally get people on board and realizing how big a problem this is.